Okay, let's just jump right into it. Uh, so I just took a 3D print, I primered it white, I primered it black, and then uh, did a little bit of light dry brushing. Um, the Mandalorian coin uh, kind of added as just something I wanted to put on the base to give it a little bit more oomph. But um, yeah, that was just kind of an extra print I had laying around. I textured the uh, base. Um, and then once I had a primer black, I just uh, decided to go ahead and uh, just start dry brushing it. Uh, you know, just to kind of pick out some of the details. Nothing fancy, just a light gray smattering um, with a uh, flat brush. So it looks, you know, like this basically. <laughs> um, from there, I went ahead and started on the pants, which is kind of a mix of a sort of a Prussian blue and blue gray. I don't remember the exact colors. I think they were Vallejos, but uh, deep sea gray or something like that, or deep sea blue, I, one of those. You'll probably be able to pick it out, but um, that, that, that was a pretty good match for what I was using as a reference at the time. Um, and I did use a lot of different references online for his armor, and the first decision I made was to go ahead and go with a... Um, uh, the first season armor and I just always like that one it just to me it has a lot more character than the uh, original armor um, once I had the blue down uh, a lot of the first part of the painting actually is just doing a lot of base coat so um, initially I had this really nice sort of red brown I think that's actually the color name uh, which is a liquid golden uh, brand acrylic but Turns out it's not really a rust. Um, it's almost like an oxblood red. But that's okay. I mean, it still looked cool, and, and I used it as a base coat. Um, and it was sort of not quite opaque, a little semi-translucent, so you could still pick out some of the shading underneath um, from the black and the dry brushing. Uh, then I went straight to the uh, dark, dark, muddy poop brown <laughs> for the cake. It's... Yeah, you know, I mean, I think I called it Mandalorian Kate Brown in the last one. This is basically just a repeat of the color scheme I did for the three inch models. But, um, I mean, it's five inches tall. I think I printed a little bit, I think at 100%. And you can get this model, by the way, off printables.com. Um, they're free. Uh, I mean, if you want to know what my Cura settings are, I don't even remember. I just used whatever stock settings I had. Uh, with a 3.5 inch or 3.5 nozzle millimeter, I think, not inches. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be like a giant, giant printer uh, tip. Anywho, point is, it's a free model, doesn't even require supports. This is a not even a resin printer, it's just an FDM printer. I think I, I printed this one in uh, gray PLA. And, I mean, it turned out decent, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. It's not, it's not perfect. You can still see some scan lines or print lines in it, but I mean, for what it was, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it turned out pretty well. Um, and this was actually a, a gift for a friend of ours, um, that likes the show and, and he was, he, he wasn't expecting it. So in the end, uh, and you'll see what it looked like when it looks like, uh, finished at the end of the video, obviously, but, um, he liked it. I thought it came out okay for, you know, a, a free print. Um, it wasn't a super fast paint job. Uh, wasn't a super long paint job either. Probably took a couple hours total. I just condensed it for the video. But uh, yeah, most of this is just the base color, base coats going down. Um, some tans for the, uh, I don't know what you'd call this, his wrap. Um, it's almost like a uh, a gambeson that they wear underneath the armor, you could say, or padding uh, that the armor attaches to. The thing that was tricky with this model is there are so many different shades of brown, and I, I really wanted to kind of differentiate all the browns from each other and not use the same brown for it. Like, I didn't want to use the same brown for the belt that I used for the holster, that I used for the armor, that I, you know what I mean? Um, so just trying to find and mix different shades of brown was kind of a pain. Uh, I did kind of start the base coat for his um, helmet and his shinier armor in a sort of a bronzy brown. And that's mainly because I know he looks silver in the new episodes. But if you look at older episodes and even a lot of the uh, artwork and the pictures that come out, 
or like the I guess the the promo photos and stuff it doesn't really look silver it it's because the lighting that they use in the I guess whatever atmosphere or environment he's in it, you know you get a lot of these sort of uh, titanium bronzy champagne golds uh, going on so I didn't want to just do a straight shiny silver I wanted to kind of mix it up and and, and here's some of the pictures I used for reference and if you look at it, I mean, yeah, on the right, it looks very silver. But if you look at the one on the left, it almost looks bronze. Um, man, his armor's tore up. <laughs> tore up from the floor up. But uh, yeah, so that that's kind of the look I was going for. I did the same thing for the medallion. I decided that should be a good bronze color. And the shoes, man, that's just a whole other thing. Um, if you look at the shoes, they don't really have a lot of detail. Um, at least not on this model. They they just look like Popeye shoes. I don't know if, if that's a good description way to describe it. Mickey Mouse feet is what I would say uh, would be a really good description. They're just big clod hoppers. They don't have any detail at all. Um, and that's not the case, obviously, in the uh, in in the costume. The costume actually has a lot more detail. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, I fixed that later and I'll show you how um, I actually went on I had to go online and find a reference for his boots <coughs> that would work with well I mean just that I could copy basically um, and just hand paint the the detail on the boots because there wasn't any sculpted into it um, and when I say sculpted I, I mean it was a 3d model probably on blender or something I, I don't know what they made it with but um, I guess they just kind of went loosey-goosey with the boots and didn't really put a lot of detail. Uh, maybe at the time they created it, there wasn't a lot of references, but um, yeah, it, it, it actually looks a ton better uh, once you paint the detail in. So there he is, kind of with most of his base colors in, not a lot of highlights and, and, and inks or anything. I did go back with some uh, silver uh, for the scratches and uh, a couple of washes to kind of uh, make the colors pop up a little bit more. I think right here I'm just adding a little bit of silver to his buckle and some other little areas. Or, no, maybe that's brown. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, like I said, it was kind of, it, it wasn't a super difficult uh, paint job. Uh, I really just kind of went along the same lines as I went with the original one. Um, I just tried to uh get it to where it looked a little i mean there were just a lot more details to fill out um so and, and it being bigger if you're used to painting a, a 28 millimeter or 30 millimeter miniature uh and then moving to a much larger figure man let me tell you it is way easier to paint something large yes your mistakes will show but i mean it you just have so much more freedom. I mean, look, I'm just I'm just dabbing that brush on that rich Corinthian leather holster. It's it's I don't really have to worry about painting over a line or something because everything's so much bigger. You know, you, you can use a much bigger brush. You can kind of take your time and take it easy. Um, here's here's a reference for the boots, by the way. So these these are the real boots on the real costume and. All those little lines and details obviously didn't exist. The heel didn't exist. The sole didn't exist. Um, and I ended up having to just wing it and eyeball that onto the boots. So here you go. There, There's the boots. And if you look, there's kind of a little heel I kind of painted it. I basically just painted it in patches and then put in some dark lines. I think the one on the left came out the best, honestly. But yeah, I mean... I tried to duplicate it as well as I could. It's a little bit shiny there. The lines need to be faded out, but in the end, uh, it ended up looking pretty good, I think. Uh, at least it matched well enough to that photo to where you could tell like, okay, these boots aren't just like some, you know, shapeless blobs. So uh, bronzed up the uh, base and then eventually, uh, I put some, I, it, so let me lay it out like this. So my, my system, if you can call it a system, is I put some primer down, I put some highlights down, I put the uh, base colors down, and then I start building it up. 
and then I eventually will put a couple of washes and then go back over with some more highlights and some all some small details and that's it I mean I don't have like a and, and, and that can change, you know, I don't have a set formula. I, I always tell people, don't don't listen to all these nerds on the Internet that are like some sort of paint scientist. That <laughs> you got to do it this way if you want to do it right. Who cares? Paint it any way you want. If it looks good in the end, uh, follow whatever method you feel works for you. Um, I guess in the end, that makes me a paint nerd. But I mean, <laughs> I'm not telling anybody how to do it. I mean, uh, yeah, I've been doing it a while. I'm not claiming to be great at it uh, or even an expert. Um, but, uh, you know, I can tell you more or less how I did it, but I'm not going to, I can't share with you any kind of wisdom or, or, or algorithm that's going to make you paint better. You just do it with practice and you just keep doing it till it looks the way you want it to look. Um, and that's what I do. I mean, like I said, not an expert. Uh, been doing it a while and I, I know what I like personally visually uh, so that's kind of what I stick to um, <laughs> terrible camera work you can see I tried to put a little bit of wood grain in that in that stock of his rifle uh, whether that comes out like wood I mean I think it looks woody um, the sand uh, if you're wondering is just a uh, actually epoxy sculpt maybe it's milliput i think it's epoxy sculpt that I, I i just dabbed on there and smeared around and then just textured a little bit with a, a sculpting tool to kind of give it a little bit of a sandy grain look you know because you know most of the stuff takes place on on the in the desert scenes in the first season right he's on uh, navar navarro navar i can't remember the name of the planet uh, you Star Wars nerds can correct me. I don't claim not to be a Star Wars nerd. I just sometimes forget. But there it is. It's pretty much done. Um, you can see the boot looking a lot better than it did. Um, I think I added some more highlight on the right or the left yellowy kind of armor plate in the end because it needed it. Um, I think I'm just putting some washes on here. <laughs> just small details um possibly some silver and some scratches i do weather it a little bit um but in the end i think it came out pretty good um certainly the person who received it really liked it and 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 you know it, it was a very straightforward like i said uh it was a free model it took about i want to say four hours to print at that scale um i used a little thin piece of wood uh panel like a little saucer of wood you can pick them up at walmart for like a buck and then textured the base and squished that uh also 3d printed uh, medallion um which i think probably took that that probably took 45 minutes maybe maybe <laughs> um it wasn't even a great print but it, it actually turned out pretty decent in it and i think it really fit with the uh with the model so there you go um yeah, I guess uh, that's all I really got to say. So here it is primed, then black, then fully painted. And now the spinny spin. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wait, what? 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 Oh, where'd this guy come from? What the heck? Uh, everybody wants to take a ride on the Ferris wheel. Oh, hey. Oh. Anyway. So there's the finished model in all its uh, splendiferousness. And thanks for watching. If you liked it, uh, you want to see more, subscribe, like the video so I can keep making them. Um, I mean, you know, I do it for my own fun, but you know, it's always nice to hear some positive feedback. If, if you know, you liked what you saw or you got some input, uh, hey, I'm open to listening to folks. Why not? Um, but yeah. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.